the king yes that's right of our kingdom the one whose government knows no end we worship you king oh the king is here <laughs> the king is here oh our king sit in our midst we welcome you Oh, sweet Jesus, Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to us through your wall. Let there be a shaking. Because when the king steps in, it's a grand entrance. King of kings, Lord of lords, may no one remember any mortal man here, but may all eyes be fixed on you. I decrease. I do not lose some of my reputation. I lose all of it. I decrease that you may increase in our midst. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Send your word with power. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Oh, yes, Lord. Speak the word only, 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 and my servant shall be made whole. Let there be deliverance. Set the captives free. And you take the glory. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Give the King of Kings a big hand. It is us. Please be seated. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnarounds. Amen and amen. Today, the King is here. Yes. And he will avenge you speedily. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All that are watching on, at home from various nations of the world, welcome you into this very special covenant day of vengeance and god will not call it a day of vengeance without having his bow ready and so everyone that has suffered any form of affliction or oppression from the enemy today in this covenant day of vengeance your enemies shall be nowhere to be found in the name of jesus Engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecy, part three. The king has a lot to say. And so you want to make sure you are very attentive as we go through this. There are certain things said in the first service will not be said in the second. There are certain things said in the second will not be said in the third. So God knows you are here for second. And your word is here in Jesus' mighty name. Engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecy by way of reminder, what is prophecy? We've simply concluded by saying prophecy is the unveiling of God's plan and purpose for a people or an individual. The unveiling, the revealing, the uncovering, the exposure of God's plan and purpose. God is a God that is never caught unawares. He's always aware of what is going on. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord. I love it in the NIV, he said, I know the plans. I know the plans that I have for you. Aren't you glad God planned a plan for you? I know the plans that I have for you. Place it back, say the Lord, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. So God never has a plan to destroy you, but he has a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Please lift up your hands. This is that year for you. Amen. Second service, please wake up. This is that year for you. Amen. I said this year, this 2021, is that year for you. Amen. Can you lift up your hands where you are? This year shall be the Best year you've had since you were born. 
Now, please come with me. We looked at last week by way of reminder. I'll touch on it very quickly. There are four main sources of prophecy. Number one is the word of God. A more sure word of prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19 to 21. Number two, we have prophets of God. Prophets of God. And we know that unto none was the prophet Elijah sent, but unto the widow of Zarephath. God sends us prophets with a word for us in their mouth. And until they are received, believed, accepted, and obeyed, we may never have what they carry for us. Number three is the encounters we have with God. And I think this was in the third or fourth service last week. I call this PPE. Amen. Personal prophetic encounters. God that speaks in public with power also speaks in private with the same power. Amen. What kind of power? The same. Power. The, same. the same. Just Maybe Friday, down Saturday, I'm trying to remember which day exactly. I woke up and I was in prayer. In fact, this word came with me as I woke up. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3, that's right. He said, I have loved you Amen. with an everlasting love. Amen. I said, "What? Well, you know, there are things you hear you can't sleep. I said, this must be in the word. And so I went searching for it. And Jeremiah 31, 3 appeared. Look at this with me. The Lord appeared of old unto me. And what did he say? Isaac, wake up. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. That is love that cannot end. Amen. You can't even terminate it if, even if you try it. Therefore, place it back please. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. And then he said, go to message. So please message. I think by now, you should be having that one. In the message translation, he said, I have never quit loving you. And never will. Therefore, expect love. Love and more love. Somebody say power. power. <laughs> That's in private. He said, I've brought you to a class now that things have changed for you. Therefore, get ready for love, for love, and for more love. I have drawn thee. I have found you faithful. I've picked you. I will never quit. It's an everlasting love. Get ready for love. For love and for more love. In other words, he said, the same way I appeared to your fathers, now I have appeared to you. Your class has changed. That was a promotion in private. Lift up your hands where you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may God visit you this week. Please let your amen be very loud. Abraham was not with anyone when God spoke to him. Jacob was alone when God spoke to him. Moses was alone when God spoke to him. Paul had people, but they didn't hear what was happening. They just knew he became blind. There is power in your time alone. Your destiny can take a brand new shape alone. God can unveil things to you alone. In fact, there are things God cannot tell you in, in, in public. He will tell you when you are alone. Lift your hands. This week, may God speak to you about your destiny. Yeah. And number four is your church family. God knows which family you belong. I said last week, don't go around finding out what did God say to another family. No, what did God say to your family? This year shall be our year of what? supernatural turnaround. Lift up your hands. Your turnaround takes place this year. Amen. So those are four major sources. You go back and have time to listen to that. The word of God, prophets of God, encounters with God, and then your church family. 
Now, by the quickening of the Spirit, what is one major prophetic word? Because we've been talking about prophecy, 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 and talking about how faith brings prophecy to pass. Why don't we pick one major prophecy for the year? And that is that the year 2021, God is bringing you and I into our promised land. Therefore, lift up your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, before we enter the 40th year, that is May 2nd to May 9th, before that week shows up, you and I will have crossed into our promised land. Please don't forget that after he brought them out of Egypt, after he delivered them, what happened next? They began to roam around. For 40 years, God gave Bishop Oedeko a liberation mandate. So 40 years ago, he brought us out. But it took 40 years to take us in. Yaya Koka Bradialota. Please let your spiritual senses come alive. He brought us out 40 years ago. And don't make any mistake about it. When he brought us out, we're having great things happen. Like you study in the book of Exodus. As they came out, they saw the mighty hand of God. But that didn't compare to the promised land. Whatever you and I have seen since we joined is not compared to the promised land. 40 years in the wilderness, he led them by the pillar of you know, cloud and, 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 and fire. 40 years wandering. But on the 40th year, they stepped in. Please hear this. We came out 40 years ago. We are stepping in this year. You don't step out one day and step in the next day. Lerush Katambradi Sozialata. Now lift up your hands, everybody. I decree as we enter into our 40th year, May 2nd to May 9th, 2021, you and I will step into our promised land. This prophecy must come alive. I want you to dream it, dream it, dream it, dream it. Are we saying we have not seen the hand of God before now? No. The children of Israel saw the hand of God also when they left Egypt. So 40 years ago, we left Egypt. 40 years ago, we left Egypt. But now this is the 40th year. Ayeto Sagaga Dogaba Babande. What happens? We must step in. We must step in. We must step in. We must step in. Therefore, lift up your hands, everybody. Your promised land year becomes a reality. <laughs> there was an extension for 40 years. They overstayed. But then after leaving, there was another 40 years. Men, we've been through the wilderness. We've seen the mighty hand of God. We've seen him do things that no man can do. But hey, 40th year, step in. Step in. Step in. Now lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, by the instrumentality of faith, none of us shall be found outside the gate of the promised land. Please follow and follow it very carefully. In Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Exodus chapter 3, he told them about the land. He told Moses, in fact, about the land. He said, and the Lord, in verse 7, said, I have very seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry by reason of their tax masters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the land of Egypt, and to bring them out. Now, at that point, he already gave them a sneak peek of the land. But coming out doesn't equal stepping in. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Coming out doesn't equal stepping in. Go and check. Not everybody that came out entered in. So now he gave them, he said, this is a land that is good. A good land, verse 8. A land that is large. A large land. A land that is flowing with milk and honey. A land flowing with milk and honey. He went on to say this land in Deuteronomy chapter 8 is a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths and springs and valleys. 
Notice what God kept doing. He kept unveiling different parts of the land after they left. What more? He said, in this land, you will eat bread without scarceness. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 9. That is a land of plenty. He said in verse 9 also that whose, 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 whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou may dig brass. That is treasure. In other words, what you are going to see is more than what meets the eye. Treasure. What more? He said in verse 12 of Deuteronomy 11. He said this is a land that the Lord himself cared for. That means by affection, you have gained my attention. It's a land that the Lord himself has not delegated anybody to look after. He looks after the land himself. He said that it's a land where rain is guaranteed to fall. And if rain is guaranteed to fall, harvest is guaranteed. Verse 14 of Deuteronomy 11. Now, in Deuteronomy 11 verse 21, he said this land, you will have people there that their days will be multiplied and the days of their children. What does that mean? He said in this land, he will give us days like heaven upon earth. That is longevity. It means as we step into this promised land, we won't be celebrating death, but life. That is, people will be 80, it won't be a big deal. People will be 90, it won't be a big deal. People will be 100, it won't be a big deal. Aha, get ready for it. You and I will see past 100. What more? Very important, he said, but watch out. In Numbers chapter 13, he said, this land also has giants. I've just given you a rundown of everything we looked at first service. You go back and listen to it. There are 10 things to look out for in the promised land. Giants. Giants. <laughs> Therefore, not everyone that has the door open can enter. Because a great and effectual door of the promised land is open. But there are many adversaries. Now for second service, our focus is this. What are the conditions for entering this land? Because the gates are open. What are the conditions for entering this land? I give you seven. Number one, walk with God. Walk with God. We've looked at what prophecy is. We've looked at four main sources of prophecy. We've looked at a prophetic word for this year. And that is that we we'll enter our promised land. We've looked at what the promised land looks like in the first service. Now for you, what are the conditions for entering this promised land? Walk with God. Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 to 9. Please hear this. The Lord said to me, who better to show you how to enter the promised land than the one who entered himself? Numbers 14, verse 6. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, the land which we have passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. Verse 8, if the Lord delight in us, ay, 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 then he will bring us into the land and give it to us. A land which floweth with milk and honey. Take verse 9, please. Put verse 9 on the screen. Quickly, verse 9. Verse 9. Is somebody there? Verse 9. Only rebel not. Verse 9, please. Only rebel not against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bread for us. Their defense is departed. Ay, ay, ay. And the Lord is with us. Therefore, do what? Fear them not. Now, hear this. If the Lord delight in us, what will make him delight in us? That we walk with him. That we walk with him. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means until you walk the walk of faith, you are not, you are not delighted in him and he cannot delight in you. So walk with God. 
God is the one who already allocated the land. He's the only one who can take you into the land. The way you think you will get into the land is not the way to get in. He's the one who will take you into the land. So number one, walk with God. Let me hear you scream it. Walk with God. Number two, love God. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 22. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 22. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, and to love the Lord your God, and to walk in his ways, and to cleave to him. So walk in his ways, number one. Number two, love him. You are not permitted to enter the land without loving the Lord your God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love him. Romans 8, 28. And I had not seen. Ears have not heard. It's never entered into the heart of man the thing that God has prepared for them that love him. So walk with God, number one. Number two, love God. Hayakrotos here. Number three, fear not their fear. Fear not their fear. Place it back on the screen, please. If you can, Numbers 14 and verse 9. That's right. Only rebel not against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land. Remember again, there are giants in the land. But they are not the ones to be there. Fear not their fear. For they are bread for us. Hallelujah. You can't take a land that you are afraid of. They are bread for... Place it back please on the screen. They are bread for us. And their defense is departed. So fear not their fear. Joshua 1 verse 6 verse 7 and verse 9. Be strong and of a good courage. This is Joshua that entered the land. The fearful cannot enter the land. It takes a, a, a degree of audacity to enter the land. Fear not their fear. Confederacy, to whom they say it's a confederacy. He said, neither fear ye their fear. Don't, you can't enter into a land and be talking with people who are fearful. You can't access this land on the account of fear. Fear not their fear. What does that mean? No matter the news going on, don't let that take your faith away. Fear not their fear. I'm telling you, you have seen the land you will enter. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at me. I said you have seen this land, you will enter the land. Fear not their fear. Somebody, can I hear you exclaim, I shall not die. Louder, please. The loudest you can. That's right. Fear not their fear. Fear not their fear. Me and Koro cannot mix. Fear not their fear. Fear not. Fear not. You can take my temperature 10 times, it's normal. Fear not. It's, it's not today that you take temperature that I'm coming to church. Every day I go to drop my children, they do temperature. So don't be bothered in case you are there. <laughs> fear not their fear. I cannot have it. The land where I'm entering, there is no virus. Aha. Fear not their fear. Now lift up your hands where you are. I cast out the spirit of fear right now. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Be strong and of a good courage. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So I shall not be afraid. I shall not be afraid of the terror that flies by day or by night. Fear not their fear. Number four, if you are following, obey his commandments. Obey his commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 to 6, you find it there. Obey his commandments. You must obey. Deuteronomy 11, you can place chapter 11 of Deuteronomy and, and, and verse 22. Obey his commandments. If you diligently keep all these commandments, if you keep them, then the land is kept for you. Keep. He says, win souls. Keep it. Reach out to the lost. Keep it. Give, keep it. Everything he commands, keep them and do them. Number five. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 
Number five, be conscious of divine presence. Place that on the screen for me and we'll look at this scripture. Numbers 14 and verse 9. We read that earlier on. Only rebel not against the law. Neither fear the people of the land. For they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. You need to know who is with you. Matthew 28 and verse 20. Lo, I am with you. Always. Even to the end of the world. Be conscious of divine presence. Of course, number six. Walk by faith. So when we talk about walking with God, we're not just talking about devotion and all of that, but walk by faith, right? If you look at Numbers chapter 14, verse 11, before we go to 2 Corinthians 5, 7, Numbers 14 and verse 11, and the Lord said unto Moses, how long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be that they believe me not for all which I have shown among them? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. Finally, number seven, condition to enter the promised land is walk with promised land bond people. <laughs> Numbers chapter 14, verse six to nine. At the point where the report came, believe you me, there were two camps. One can't believe the ten. Very few believe the two. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. But the companion of stupid people shall be destroyed. People who say it is not possible. Don't walk with people who don't want to leave Egypt. And you want to go to the promised land. You can't enter the promised land with the crowd in the wilderness. This is time to sieve those you work with. Look at it, 2 versus 10. The common is not always the right. So choose wisely who you work with. There you go, six points. Walk with God, love God. Fear not, they are fear. Obey his commandment. Be conscious of divine presence. Walk by faith. And walk with Promised land bond people. They are on their way to the promised land. Not people who are saying we will prefer Egypt. How powerful then are prophecies? Number one, God speaks according to his almighty power. Revelations 19 and verse 6. And I heard as it were a voice of great multitude. And as the voice of many waters. The voice of mighty thunderings saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth according to his mighty power. He speaks according to his mighty power. With man it may be impossible, but not with God. For with God, the all-powerful, all things are possible. Mark 10, 27. So God speaks according to his mighty power. Number two, how powerful are prophecies? God speaks according to his creative wisdom. Isaiah 55 verse 8, my ways are not your ways, neither my thoughts. Your thoughts, he says, as far as the heaven is from the earth, so are my ways from your ways. And my thoughts are obviously higher than your thoughts. You can't compare God's wisdom to man's wisdom. Our wisdom is foolishness to him. So God speaks according to his creative wisdom. For with wisdom had he founded the earth. Proverbs 3.19. And by understanding had he established the heavens. How then does faith facilitate the fulfillment of prophecies? Very simple. Faith is the last test to fight or to pass. Faith is the last test. Test to pass, to enter the promised land. The last test. The last test is the test of faith. 
And that was the test that Joshua and Caleb and their company passed. The last test to enter the promised land is the test of faith. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, I choose to believe God. God won't lie about my land. He will not lie about my promised land. If he says he's taking me there. The presence of opposition is confirmation of his declaration. Because a great and effectual door is open. First Corinthians 16, 9. But there are many adversaries. So that I see adversary it doesn't mean God lied. It is proof that the door to my promised land has been opened. And now you know how to enter there. Faith is the last test to pass. Somebody shout, I believe God. I believe God. Come on, shout it very drunkenly. The loudest you can. I believe God. I believe God. <laughs> I believe God. And Paul the apostle showed us how faith works. He said, I believe God that it shall be according as he has told me. We will make it to the land. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. We will make it to the land. You can look for that for me in the media unit. I think that's in Acts chapter 14. I believe God. I believe God. He appeared to me and he said that waters may be troubled, but the ship may be lost, but no life. No life. That is a promised land agenda. No life shall be lost. No life. Therefore, I believe God that it shall be. Even as it was told me, I believe God. Somebody let me hear you shout, I believe God. I believe God. Louder yet again. I believe God. Oh, it's a simple statement, but powerful. It may be the most powerful statement you have said this year. I believe God. I believe God. That it shall be. Acts 27 and verse 25. Even as it was told me. God visited me and he said, there will be no loss. No loss. No loss. We are going to get to the land. No loss. Now hear me, everybody listening to me, as long as there is still breath in you now, nothing will stop you from entering the land. I believe God. Woo! I believe God. That's where faith comes in. Oh, that's where faith comes in. I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. The land is good. Yes, I'm getting there. I believe him. I believe God that it shall be. One way you prove you are in faith is keep speaking it. Yes. Keep speaking it. He said, I give to you a mouth and a wisdom yes. that all of your adversaries, the adversaries at the gate, shall not be able to gain say, nor resist. They shall not be able to gain say, nor resist. Luke 21 and verse 15. He said, open up your mouth wide. Psalm 81 verse 10. And I will feel it. This is not the time to speak lightly. This is the time to speak loudly. I believe God. Second service, let me hear you scream that. Oh yes, that's right. Louder, please. Aha, the loudest you can. I believe God. No loss. No loss. Oh my God, no loss. No loss. No now lift your hands where you are. May you step into your good land. May you step into your large land. May you step into the land flowing with milk and honey. May you step into the land of brooks of water, fountains and depths. May you step into your land of plenty. May you step into your land of treasure. May you step into the land that God will take care of himself. May you step into your land of harvest. May you step into your land of longevity. Amen. May you step into this land regardless of the giants. Amen. Somebody shout, I believe God. I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. I'm not shaking in my faith. I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. Somebody jump on your feet. Begin to declare, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Yes, that's right. I believe God. 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 Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. 
If the adversary is at the gate, then vengeance must happen. Lift your hands. Second service. Any agent of the devil standing at the gate and saying, even though you have heard of the land and you have seen the land, that you will not enter into the land. I decree them finished. Let me hear your loudest amen. Please understand that we are in the last days. Even though these are glorious days for the church, they are the darkest days for the world. You, you, please hear this. There is no one God will show affection that the devil will not put attention. Affection will lead to attention. You can't be beloved of God and not be hated by the devil. If you are hearing me and you don't have enemies, life has not started yet. There are people right now, you are not aware, they've carried your name and said, kill this man. Kill this woman. But I stand here to declare anyone plotting your death, they are finished right now. There are people that are saying, why does he have peace? Why does she have joy? Why is she anointed? Why is he married? Why is he still alive? I thought the virus should have finished him. But let God arise. And let his enemies be scattered. I hereby decree, except they repent, the next 24 hours, you will hear the news of their disappearance. I don't blame you. I used to be like you before. Lord, I don't want any problem. No, there's no problem as long as you don't touch me. Touch not, you have been warned. My anointed. And do my prophets no harm. If you go on your own, no problem. But if you pick me and say, I want to finish you, there's a problem. May my God lay to rest all the enemies of your destiny. There are people that have taken your name somewhere and said, turn this man's head upside down. Turn his head upside down. Turn her head upside down. <laughs> I know when God speaks to me. Hear this. Anyone that plotted or drove anybody to where he knew they were going to do evil, including the one that drove or the one that went or the demonic force that is trying to enchant anything, I decree the God of vengeance finishes them right now. Lift your hands. I decree all the enemies of your destiny sentenced to unrecoverable death. It's a wicked war. Somebody some years ago sent some clothes to Bishop Oedekbo with charm as a gift. With charm. That is, wear it and be finished. That's the world we live in. Two brothers were praying. Some time ago, Lord, give us breakthrough. Lord, they knew the uncle was the one, you know, not letting them go. Especially from where some of us come from. They will even call you and tell you I'm the one. Wickedness. And so they kept praying, Lord, forcefully advance us. Forcefully advance us. Nothing was working. They tapped themselves. They said, vengeance. As soon as the uncle died, they progressed. I'm not looking for trouble, but don't hold me. For you to have said, I will not go into the promised land. Then you must go. Therefore, may the fire of God's vengeance 
rest upon the head of your enemies. Please hear this. He said, the day of vengeance is in my heart. And the year of the redeemed is come. What is this year? Our promised land year. Isaiah 63 verse 4. But look at this. The day he opened my eyes, I said, what? One day can equal one year. The day of vengeance. Just give me one day. So somebody say with me, Lord, today is that day. Now hear me, you shouldn't be afraid of a service like this except you are an evildoer. Because I mean, there is fire. But you have like 24 hours to repent. Because there are some evildoers who are watching online. There are people against your progress who may even be in the church. They say bless you, but in their heart they say curse you. May the God of vengeance strike on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Take your seat. I hope we can, we can get to this the way it should be. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. Because sentence is against an evil work is not executed speedily. So time is of the essence. Therefore the heart of the sons of of men is fully set to do them evil. In my short life, I've seen many things. I used to be like that. No, Lord, no, I don't like this vengeance. Just have mercy. God has two sides. It's a service like this, I won't be teaching on the vengeance area. It's time for war. It's time for what? Until the God of vengeance shows up, the wicked may never give up. Until the God of vengeance shows up, you may never enter your promised land. They have to fight to enter there. If God is going to be turning, then you better know that in the midst of turning, he must be clearing. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, just imagine something in the air turning. It is clearing. When the Lord is turning, he is clearing. You can't have turn around without clearing around. There is no way to have turn around without clearing around. So if God is saying, I will be turning around your captivity like a dream of the night, then you better allow him clear around. I perceive in my heart, God is saying, I've been waiting for you to give me one day. Some of you, Lord, please just have mercy. Not today. Not today. He's a God of mercy, but also a God of judgment. And our God is a God of vengeance. So don't tell me you are a child of God and you refuse vengeance. Oh Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. Psalm 94 verse 1. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 3, he said, I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you. He's a God of vengeance. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, I am the Lord God, I change not. Some say pray for your enemies, Jesus taught us to do that. That's right. But enemies will have a time frame. Even Jesus taught us to pray vengeance prayer. Luke 18, 1 to 8. Please balance the scripture. He said, shall, shall God not avenge his own elect, which cry unto him day and night? Every time God hears a cry, he's ready for a show. 
He said, I have heard the cry of the people which are in Egypt. And now I am come down. Exodus 3 and verse 7. And what more? The Holy Ghost is the spirit of vengeance. And when the Holy Ghost head of the church. Now, I looked at this in the first service. Time may not permit us now. When Jesus took the book in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, I believe. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Look at verse 19. Verse 19, please. Verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord, and look at verse 20. And he closed the book. Now let's go and find out where was he quoting from. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Look at 2. To proclaim the acceptable of the, of the Lord, of the Lord. then Jesus closed the book. Because if he came with vengeance, nobody would kill him. He couldn't be cleaved. And he had to be killed to win us. So when he got to verse 2, the acceptable of the Lord, he closed the book. He said, because if I come for vengeance, who will carry me? If I show with vengeance, who will slaughter me? So Jesus closed the book. <laughs> but he said, I am sending you another comforter. He will continue and open the book. Now, how do I know this? By time the first church was born, Acts chapter 2, the church was born. By chapter 5, Peter said, for just lying, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? In other words, he is the one who is opening the book from where Jesus closed the book. And it's not permitted. Ananias fell down, Sapphira fell down, the whole church was afraid. It got to a point. Somebody was stopping the outreach of Paul. Paul looked at him. Full of the Holy Ghost. So we serve a God of vengeance. Jesus taught us to pray vengeance prayer. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of vengeance. And then he looked at him. Oh fool of subtlety. And all mischief. Thou child of the devil. Uh-uh. Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now, the hand of the Lord is upon you. And you shall be blessed for a season. We're in that era now. We're in that era. Oh, you can't walk with the Holy Ghost and the book is still closed. I taught you that last Sunday. The book is open. The acceptable of the Lord is not where the book closed. Now the book is open. The day of vengeance of our God. Therefore, lift up your hands. As a result of this day of vengeance, step into your season of laughter. Amen. I didn't hear your loudest amen. amen. A louder amen. amen. A louder amen. amen. Now, as we prepare to close in this third service, I believe we're in third service. How do you execute the judgment written? This was not shared in first service. Because in Psalms chapter 149, verse 6 to 9, he said, let the high praise of God be in their mouth and two-edged sword in their hand to execute the judgment written. This honor have all the saints. So how do we execute the judgment written? Number one, you need a courageous heart. Courageous heart. Joshua 1 6, Joshua 1 7, and Joshua 1 9. A courageous heart. Be strong and of a good courage. Because you are the one to speak. This honor have all the saints. Say with me, Lord, who will not allow me to rest? Must be laid to rest. This honor have all the saints. Say with me, Father, Father anyone, anyone that will hinder me 
from entering my promised land. Take care of them now. Dishonor. Have all the saints. Not all the pastors. All the saints. But it takes courage. Courage and courage. Number two, it will take a heart of obedience. To execute judgment, you must follow the instructions of judgment. Some of you tonight, what you need to go and do is go and sprinkle your house again. God sent Moses to Pharaoh and Moses had to obey. Now, what does this mean? Until you do what he commands, don't expect him to show up. And I've said many times when God shows up, he shows off. Execution of vengeance is on his terms. So one time God was going to kill all the enemies of his children. He said, the instruction is go and praise. You can't say, no, I don't prefer to praise now. That's the instruction. It is on his terms, not your terms. Quickly, number three, is a heart of love. The children of Israel, the children that God loves, the people God loves so much, in Exodus 14, 14, he said, I will fight for you. I will fight for you. All things work together for good. Romans 8, 28. Love God. Love God. This is the year where you must love him. If you want to see the anger of any man, touch the one he loves. I'm gentle until you attend my family. And of course, number four, which is very important, we'll end there for this service, is a heart of sensitivity to his spirit. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? Peter was sensitive. Vengeance is executed usually on the behalf of those who are sensitively sensitive in the spirit. In Acts chapter 13 that we read, he said, now be blind for a season. The hand of the Lord is upon you. In the spirit, Paul quickly picked what was happening. And look at this one, then we'll close. Second Timothy chapter 4, and I believe verse 14. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Agru shagiga gadotago. Babratia. Stand up. Huh. Somebody shout sensitivity. sensitivity. If I'm not reading the Bible, don't believe me. But this is inside your own Bible. They have names. The Lord reward him. Lift up your hands. Lord, everything against my promised land. Everyone against my promised land. Every plot against my promised land. Clear them off the way right now. Lift your voice and pray. 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 Everyone standing against my entrance into my promised land. Clear them off. Clear them off. Clear them off. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Please note that we have left the gentle era of the church. We have left that era. I shared in the first service, when I was preparing for marriage, one demonic lady will come around and be following me up and down like a monitoring spirit and be announcing to everybody that I'm her husband. In fact, one said I bought her wedding gown. I've never seen her before. Some would say agents of the devil. I kept quiet before. 
For one night, I took her in the night. In prayers. That was the last day I saw her. Somebody said, where is she? She must have died. When I bring you to my level, you can't survive. Now hear this. Anyone standing against your access to your good land, to your promised land, I decree they shall not survive this day. May the Lord avenge you speedily. In Jesus' name. Say with me, O oh Lord, oh Lord, to whom vengeance belongs, show thyself. And within the next 24 hours, there will be a manifestation of the God of vengeance on your behalf. In Jesus' name. Wherever you are, you are not born again. I'd like to quickly have you surrender your life to Jesus. Nobody here is better than you. We are all privilegedly forgiven. Wherever you are, this is time for you to surrender your life to Jesus. Please, while the others take their bottle of oil, I'd like you to pray this very simple prayer of faith after me, loud and clear. Say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all of my sin. Wash me in your blood. Make me a child of God. Jesus, today, I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for I'm now born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, grace has found them. Let your grace preserve them. In Jesus' precious name. You pray that prayer here in the sanctuary or um, you're watching online. Look at the screen. Quickly send your details there. If you pray that prayer in the sanctuary, unashamedly, please lift up your hands. Someone will reach out to you right now. God bless you. Lift up your hands. Officials, quickly place in their hand our gift materials to them. Take your bottles of oil. Say with me, this is the oil of vengeance. When the enemy shall arise like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard against him. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Therefore, as this oil touches you, I decree that this is fire on the head of your enemies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anoint yourself and give God praise. If you just came in for the second service, take a shot of the oil. And as you do, that is liquid fire. Comes into you, cleanses you, and burns every shaft in your system. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands. Go in peace. When vengeance comes on the hand of the enemy, peace comes into your house. Therefore, may this day be filled with peace. Within the next 24 hours, as proof that God has taken care of every enemy of your destiny, may you enjoy unusual peace and joy. In the name of Jesus. If you're also here, this is your first time worshiping with us, just lift up your hands. Our officials will attend to you. They'll put a very important package in your hand. God bless you. Clap for them, please. All our first time worshipers. Next Sunday, it's a covenant day of marital breakthroughs. What is God going to be doing? He will be terminating marital delays, bringing peace in troubled homes. He will be strengthening stable homes and there shall be miracle speedy contacts for marriage. Did I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. Also be reminded very importantly that next Sunday in the third service we are graduating over 300. Word of Faith Bible Institute. It's never happened. In North and South America. We give God praise for that. In Jesus name. Don't miss midweek service. Keep the fire burning. Everything has changed around us. And it shall be evident also in your life. In Jesus mighty name. Shout the loudest. Amen. amen. Bring your hand to your chest. And share the goodness of the Lord. One to go. Surely. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnarounds. Then expect turnarounds to become your new identity from henceforth. Amen and amen. Love you all. Somebody shout with me, I see my promised land. You shall get there. God bless you.